I'm Amanda Pfeiffer, an education coordinator at the Canadian Light Source. I'm here again with Tina. Um, Tina, do you want to introduce yourself and share a little bit about who you are? Sure. Uh, my name is Tina Ryu, and I am a high school science teacher at, with the Saskatoon Public School Division here in Saskatoon. And uh, right now, my role is as a part time. Uh, secondary assessment consultant as well, so kind of straddling both sides of the of the roles of education. Um, yeah, I've been taking students to students on the beam lines now for over a decade. Um, student groups that I have are uh, in an extracurricular type of club, and so we do this um, outside of school hours. So, cool. Um, so I'm interested in hearing your perspective on students on the beam line poster competition. Because like you said, you've been doing this yeah. for a fair amount. You've got some experience under your belt. Um, so how do you feel about the, the poster competition? Like what does that mean for you? What does that mean for your students? Um, in terms of the poster competition, I think that provides students with uh, a goal to shoot for. Um, the process itself is uh, amazing and it's it's great that the students get to work on um, a project that they're interested in but I think having the poster competition there provides that extra bit of motivation for students to strive for something and uh, it focuses them which to me is always the best thing that you can have is sort of that carrot at the end of the process because if we just went through the process, I don't know that they would be as engaged, but knowing they have to complete a poster and do a presentation, what it does is it it hones their ability to understand what what's a, what lies ahead. So yeah, it's not just wide open and the students just kind of do a report and they're done. I like this process because they know that there's other student groups out there doing things. And so how do you make your process um, meaningful? And it is very similar to the scientific process that you know professors have to go through or other researchers you know you're competing for beam time and in this process even though it's pretty casual it's still you know forcing them to understand how to create a scientific poster and a lot of my students do go on to professional careers where they actually have to make their own scientific posters so you know going through this process you know in high school is probably one of the more meaningful things that they do um, in terms of of moving moving forward in their schooling, yeah, it's interesting to hear how a lot of them take that on. And like, not only like is the students on the beam line like such a good point to have on a resume, but the the products or the artifacts that they create out of that that they can continue to take that on. That's pretty valuable for them, I imagine. So, yeah. like, they told me, like, my one student who's in medicine right now, she's in her third year. Um, she actually said to me, um, cause she made a science poster for one of our courses or whatever. And I said, oh, this looks familiar. You standing beside the poster doing tours. And she laughed, she put on there, you know, she said this, the synchrotron poster thing prepared me so much for this. Cause lots of students hadn't done it any type of thing. She already had the size. She knew like, you know, all the things that the little pieces that you don't know, you don't know, right? She already had headings. Like she, she kind of basically pulled up the scaffold and just used um, the basics from it to, to put her stuff together. She said it took her barely like one night to put it together. So to me, that says that this is valuable, right? Like that's that's where it's, you gotta keep doing it. And yeah. even engineers use uh, science posters as well. Like some of my engineer students, same comments, exact same comments. Like, thank God we did this before, you know? Like I knew how to lay it out. Um, I look for the right programs to to get my graphs going like unreal it's like yeah. oh you know i couldn't have taught them this like they kind of stumbled on this stuff themselves too right so yeah that they learn and taught each other was what was really helpful so yeah um so in terms of coming from your own from the teacher perspective like how do you see this process of both the poster the presentation I guess the process of sharing the information, like what do you see as a teacher? How valuable is it? What's, what's your role in that? I mean, you talked about the managing aspect, like how does that, I guess, how does that influence your teaching philosophy or approach to teaching? Well, I think doing this whole process uh, for this long, <clears throat> what it does is it allows for 
me to see uh, just, I guess that students are going to go above and beyond what I think they can do. And so knowing that and having trust in the fact that, you know, they have more capacity than, than I, even I thought they had, um, it actually changes my process in my classroom a little bit where I feel like I can, I can push kids a little harder, not like being more difficult with them, but, you know, asking more from them. I think that, that uh, what that does is it gives them an understanding that they can, that I have the belief that they can do more. And I think sometimes if they know that someone feels this way, that, that they should strive for it. And so, yeah, having just, I guess, higher expectations than, than what I had previously to doing all of this work. You know, I've definitely, I don't let kids off the hook quite as easily. Um, and that really, I think, helps them become uh, better at what they're doing. In terms of disseminating the information, um, I think that what it does for a lot of the students is it gives them confidence in their in their skills in terms of presenting. So there's always going to be one or two students that are very comfortable presenting to anybody. Um, but for the most part, they are very nervous, even the, the strong ones, presenting in front of the CLS staff um, or even the school staff. We've been invited a few times to um, present to our school board. Uh, they have um, a monthly series called Celebrating Excellence. And we've been invited a number of times to go and present to the school board on their science. And, you know, it's kind of funny because they always feel like they're speaking not scientifically enough. But when they go to the school board and they get questions, you know, they have to kind of bring it even down another level. So it's really neat to see for them to understand that science can be translated in a lot of different ways. And uh, like this year, the, there was a lot of plans to, they were using social media quite a bit. Um, and there were plans because some of the students are SRC members to uh, have dressed like a scientist day, but uh, COVID hit and that never came to fruition. But uh, yeah, we, we have Facebook pages. We have a Facebook page. Um, the students present on their Instagram or their Snapchat, you know, little pictures of what they're doing. Um, and so their followers get to follow along too. And so they get questions and, you know, we do get a lot of interest because um, kind of word spreads that this is a cool thing. So yeah, that's part of how they sort of get the word out a little bit more in the in their community. Um, yeah, I think kind of on that note, that's a good place to end it. So thank you again for sharing your experiences and providing perspective on the students on the beam line and the poster competition, because I mean, it, it's one way to share information, but it's another process they have to go through and just the learning experiences you can get from it or that the students can get. It's just, I find so valuable. So for sure. To hear that. All right. Well, thank you again. And uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Talk again nice soon. talking. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.